All right, Vivang, it's the rundown. It's Monday, it's December 18th. Uh, I'm Eddie, I'm hosting here. We got Nikki Smokes, we got Benjamin Mintz. Uh, this rundown is, is presented by High Noon. The High Noon El Prez Pack is here, featuring the top four High Noon vodka seltzer flavors as ranked by El Prez himself. These flavors include passion fruit, pineapple, pear, and an all new flavor, tangerine, all made with real vodka and real juice. This 12 pack is only here for a limited time, so get it while you can. Uh, just look at the, for the pack with Dave's face on it. You can even scan the QR code on the pack and have El Prez virtually join your party. Visit highnoonspirits.com to find the El Prez pack nearest to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the tangerine, I don't know if you tried My that yet, Nick. My favorite one ever. Oh, really? Yeah, it's number one. It used to be pineapple number one. Now it's tangerine, one thousand percent. It's safely in my top four. I, I still got pear ahead of it, but really, yes, pear. Pear's awesome, especially the way the high noon pear smells. There's something about it mm. that makes it even better. It's like it like. Where's tangerine on your list? Is it top? Top. It, top two. Top four. It's in a, I, I would say right now I'd go, uh, pear, um, kiwi. Wow, that's yeah. a crazy take. Don't sleep on the kiwi. That's a crazy take. I'm telling you. And then uh, definitely watermelon. And then the last spot's a cage match between tangerine and peach. Wow. Yeah. You don't even have pineapple up there. No. I like pineapple, but it's just not my favorite. What? Yeah, so go get the press pack, though. It's definitely Fire. my favorite pack for sure. Um, all right, obviously going to start with NFL Sunday. Um, not to insert myself fully, but I do feel like the Bears play the most uh, tension-packed game. Or yes. Or drama-packed game. Uh, it, it, obviously, from an outsider's perspective, Nick, you could, you could, you could. Well, I mean, I was basically a Bears fan all Sunday because I bet them. I was rooting for them. Some even say I rooted for them more than White Sox Dave did. I guess he wants them to lose. I wanted them to win. I thought they played a good game, but I felt your pain. I'm obviously not a Bears fan, but I'm a Dolphins fan, so I know what it's like to choke away and lose games like that. Yeah. But the way you guys lost that game, like that had to be heartbreaking. And then Darnell Mooney having the touchdown right in his lap and basically kicking the interception away, like that that's heartbreak. Am I, am, I, am I wrong when I say that I feel like Hail Marys are like close to being like, like they're more attainable in today's age than they were back in the day? Yeah, well, players figured out the tip. Like now you'll have receivers sitting on the goal line waiting for that tip. And Mooney, Mooney was all over it, bro. He fucked it up. Yeah, Mooney's your like prototypical wide receiver you would want facing the pile because he's, he's not tall. He's like 5'11". So he's the guy you want facing the pile waiting for the tip. And it was went exactly according to plan, except he didn't catch it. So. And Big Cat said that was like a gateway game for him. Did you feel the same way? If they won that game, are you all in? Playoffs, we could win, keep Eberflus, keep Fields. And now is it back to let's lose every game and get a better draft pick? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone was in the perspective of like, hey, if you got a chance to make the playoffs at this point, we're playing better. We won two in a row. Uh, we haven't won much before that. So you had a chance to go on a three-game winning streak. Uh, things were like really coming together. We were like starting to look more consistent and then we just, you know, old habit, bad habits die fast, old habits die fast, how it's the same. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, old habits just, die, We yeah. just reverted right all the way back, so. Um, it is, like, it hurt, but then again, like you do have to keep in perspective, it is still a five-win team. Yeah. Like I have experienced way more hurt from that franchise than yesterday. I, I think you don't tank. Like I think y'all have got momentum right now. Your defense is playing really well. You already have Carolina is going to be, well, even though they won yesterday, you are still going to get a top two or three pick. I mean, I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of momentum with the Bears right now. I know it's a terrible, brutal loss and gut, but like the the way the defense has improved, and you saw it yesterday, forced multiple turnovers. Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm a bigger believer in Fields, I think, than most. Yeah. But I think y'all got things going the right way. I just think Luke Getz, he's just a, a horrendously bad offensive coordinator, and y'all need someone that's catered to Fields' skill set. Yeah, he's that's bad. Well, he's bad. Don't get me wrong. We just we just don't control our own destiny. That's a, like we yeah, need a lot. Yeah, never to will. Happen. No, I am not, not at five and eight. Are you guys still in the hunt? Like, are you in the graphic? Or five and nine now. Oh, no, um, you guys are dead. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, we need, like, a lot of help. And don't get me wrong, the three teams we face, we, we, I mean, we face the Cardinals, the Falcons, and the Packers. And like, like, that's why it was so attainable. You win that game, you could go nine and eight, and you could yeah. maybe slide in. So, yeah, it's, uh, that was pretty much the final nail in the coffin. But uh, on the reverse, obviously, you guys had two nice wins. You yep. absolutely fucking took a dump. On the Jets. Yep. And then Sam, likewise, you guys dumped on New York. Yeah, and it was fun too because oh. all the Tommy DeVito, all this madness. What? Uh, are you anti-Italian? I'm not anti-Italian at all. Well, I'm you, just, you said all this bullshit. 
I'm just pro watching the Saints kick the crap out of young quarterbacks. Okay, and, but but you said all this bullshit. Well, I mean, the Saints were doing it yesterday. So <laughs> I don't know. What does this even mean? But whatever. The point is, is that all the DeVito hype and madness, that train uh, derailed a little bit yesterday. Yeah. And Saints 24-6 win. I'm, I'm not letting myself get too hyped because the Saints are 7-7. Seven and seven. They're tied for first in the NFC South with Tampa. Tampa has a tiebreaker right now. Huge Thursday night game at the Rams, who are also 7-7 seven and seven Thursday. I'm not still convinced the Saints are that good. Like, I think they're re- they've had a really weak schedule. Yeah. The defense dominates young quarterbacks. So, we'll see. I mean, it's all on the line Thursday night. Because right now the Saints are the seven of the wild card. If they beat the Rams Thursday night, I'll get excited. I still have serious reservations about that game, though. Just being truthful. And we're kind of in the same boat as you. I mean, our boat's a little nicer, a little more well it's put together. Nicer. Like, beating the Jets 30 to nothing doesn't get my dick up. Like, Zach Wilson sucks. Trevor Simeon sucks. The Jets are not good. The Dolphins are notorious for pounding shitty football teams. But our next three games, at home against Dallas, on the road against the Ravens, at home against Buffalo. Mm. If we lose those three games, I will shave my asshole, pick up the hairs, put it in a blender, mix some bleach in there, and I will drink it. And, and I'm serious. I've seen this movie way too many times with the Dolphins when they're in prime position to rewrite history, and they just choke it away, and I can't do it anymore. So they need to win two of the next three games to win the division and clinch a home playoff game, and that's all I care about. With all due respect, I think you should save the asshole-eating bets for, like, a more meaningful position. No, 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 no. This is as meaningful as it gets for the Miami Dolphins. That or a playoff game. I understand that to consider if they're on fraud watch or not because – we are I, Us versus the Cowboys is the fraud bowl. Like, we're the same exact team. Yeah, that's, that's a, what a fascinating game that is. Yeah. Uh, we're the same week. exact team. Yeah. One's in the NFC, one's in the AFC. And we're the same teams. I don't think the Dolphins are frauds yet. But if they lose the next three games, they're frauds. I, I don't even want to make the playoffs if they lose the next three games. Look, yeah. I got to give you all credit, though. I know that the Jets are bad and all that stuff. But, like, Tyree Kill was out. That line went down from eight to seven. And y'all came out, look, that's the effort you want to see yeah. them bounce back. That Monday night loss was obviously horrible. There's no getting around it. But you didn't let it linger to the next week. You freaking came out, yep. shut out the Jets. You know, that was a state. You know, I know the Jets aren't great, but that's still, that's what you want to see. You want to see that resiliency. I agree. And uh, just fascinating. That Dallas game next week, and I'm sure we're about to get into that. Uh, the Dallas-Miami game next week is one of the most fascinating NFL games of the entire season. I agree. Uh, I think easily. From a full pers- football perspective-wise, it's a fun year, I think. I, every, every week, it's like the Eagles are, you know, the top of the class for the NFC, and then now all of a sudden they're not. You know, everyone to down the 49ers. Now the 49ers look unbeatable. They're the best team in football. Cowboys. Like, I think the Niners are the best team, and I don't even think it's close. Yeah, but then shit, it just keeps it just keeps fading and going up and down. You know what I mean? No, like, no, and the AFC is wide open. I yeah. mean, you look around the AFC right now, I mean, I think the Ravens are the favorite, especially after the win last night in Jacksonville. Uh, but, you know, Buffalo's getting hot. My, you know, you got Miami. I mean, they don't. nobody knows anything. Chief, you can never count out the Chiefs with Mahomes. Yep. You know, I, I feel like the AFC is wide open as it's been in a long Although time. the Chiefs do look kind of broken. And I know I, I, they, they pummeled the Patriots pretty much yesterday, but they, they just don't look right. They're just one of those teams, if they get in, though, they could win. Mm-hmm. It was like Brady with the Bucks. Like that year, that whole regular season, they looked eh. And then Brady got in the playoffs and he did his thing and they won the Super Bowl. Like that's the same thing could happen with the Chiefs. The other thing with the Chiefs this year that people aren't realizing, yeah, the offense is definitely not as good. I mean, obviously, you can watch them, you see the stats there. This is the best defense they've had in 25 years. And so. As bad as the offense looks and they don't look the same, their defense is keeping them in every game. Yeah. I mean, Chris Jones is a mom. I mean, they got some dudes on that yeah. day. No, I'm, I'm excited. for. I mean, obviously, I wish the Bears were in it, but I'm excited for the playoffs. I think it's going to be a fun one. I almost I just want to fast forward and get to the playoffs. Yeah, but it's but it's still great, though, because there's still a lot of good games uh, before them. Like, I'm so nervous. I know. Like, I'm, but that's I'm good. In, that's, you got that feeling inside late in the no, year, no, dude. I, mean, you know, I want like, the feeling I mean, of I'm division champs and I know I have a home playoff game. I don't like yeah. the nervousness of – if the Dolphins lose the next three games, they might not even get in. Yeah. Like, I, I, can't, I can't fathom no, that. No, it's all in line. I can't fathom that. Yeah, like, I, I'm kind of invested in the, the Dolphins. They're a fascinating team. The Bills are a fascinating team. Yeah, and the Bills yesterday. Yeah. Let's get into that for a minute. Yeah. That was the most – was that the most dominant effort we've seen in pro football this year? It's got to be one of them. Yeah. I mean, they I came know. out at home and they beat – Walloped them. The hell out of Dallas. And James Cook, Cook as an, James Cook's an emerging mm-hmm. star – And the biggest thing with them, I got all this heat on Twitter. When they fired Ken Dorsey from offensive coordinator and they promoted Joe Brady, 
I like got on there and I'm like, this is the best move they can make is Ken Dorsey abandons the run every game. They forget James Cook's on the team. They're in third and 10, third and 12. Allen turns the ball over a ton because they don't stay run, they don't stay ahead of the down distance and they don't stay balanced. And now they've committed to the running game and they're asking Allen to be in less high leverage situations. I mean, I know he's still going to turn the ball over, but it's definitely less. Mm -hmm. And look what's happening. I think he barely broke 100 yards yesterday and they won yeah. 31 to 10. Like, yeah. that's crazy. And run yeah. the ball and play defense and like just. I don't know. I just thought that was dominant effort. So, like, that, everyone's frauds. Four teams no. got to make it to the conference championship. Yeah. And that, that's why I'm like, who's, who's it going to be? So I, I can't yeah. pick who's going to come out of the AFC. I can't even pick the two teams that will play in the AFC championship game. I know. It, but that, I think that's good. I, th I think the NFC will definitely be Niners and then whoever wants to get beat by the Niners. Well, the, the NFC thing, though, like the thing with the AFC is the depth is so much bigger in the yeah. AFC. Like the NFC, I mean, you're talking about wild card. Like I said, the Saints are like in the wild card thing. The only team that looks dangerous to me that could be a wild card in the NFC is the Rams. Mm -hmm. I think the Rams are good. Really? I think the Rams are good. Like NFC they, championship good? I mean, I just think they could win a road playoff game or two. Like, I like split, that. I think if the Rams, if Stafford goes back to Detroit, you're telling me you don't think the Rams would win that game? That'd be something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think McVay That's and it. Stafford, they've won a Super Bowl. They've, like, Stafford was banged up some this year, but when he's played, they've been good. They're 7-7, seven and seven, but I think they're a good football team. Good to it. Uh, moving on, UFC 296. Sean Strickland got in a fight in the, uh, the stands. Uh, Patty the Batty, huge win. Colby got smoked. Uh, Nick, did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Uh, Kobe's just an absolute fraud. I mean, he's had so many chances to be a champion, he just chokes it away. Um, I hope President Trump, like, denounces him and stops claiming him because he's <laughs> just a fucking walking embarrassment. You can't call out LeBron like that and have an effort. No, you can call out LeBron. LeBron. LeBron's a scum. But you can't call out someone's dead dad and then fight like a pussy the entire fight and get whooped. Like, you can't do that. It was sad because it was uncharacteristically like him. Like, he's always, like, the guy who brings the heat. He, he always brings pressure in fights. And he just, I don't know, he just looked kind of flat. Yeah, yeah. He, looks like, he looks like what he is. He's a fraud. And I used, to, I used to fuck with Kobe, but you only get so many chances to be a champion and you go out there and you shit down your leg every single time. He doesn't deserve it. They should stop giving him title fights. You got anything? Man, I just think if you're going to run your mouth like that, you got to back it up. You know, and I know that's what yeah. the UFC in the fight game is. You're building the hype. But, you know, he talked a lot. Well, that, that uh, persona only works if you're winning. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, gets, it gets, gets tough fast if you're not. And, I mean, hey, I'm happy for Patty. I thought that was a dangerous spot for him to be in. Yeah. And he pummeled Ferguson. I mean, I'm not happy for Patty. It was my last leg of the parlay. <laughs> And I had Ferguson. Oh, you went against Bart? Oh, I was an idiot. Why are you going against I, 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 just, I just like the juice. I was getting plus 235, and I got bought into the David Goggins hype. Yeah, yeah, And I yeah. paid the price. So, like, I'm glad I got my foot in my mouth. I know he's a Barstool guy, so yeah. shout out Patty the Batty. And that's on me for uh, fading the brand like a loser. A lot of people thought it was, like, a no-win situation for well, him. Well, the line, he was such a big favorite. Well, yeah, but, uh, yeah, and if, and if he wins, he beats a guy who's lost six fights in a row. If he loses, he loses to a guy who's, a kill, like, a killer who is, like, top tier at one point in his career. But Patty, I'm surprised Ferguson didn't leave his gloves in the octagon and just retire. He needs to retire. Know. Dana White said he should retire. That was bad. He got whooped. Yeah, he's kind of in a, in a bad way right now. So, I don't know. We'll see. And, and obviously, like, everyone's focused on Colby. Like, Edwards, you got to put a lot of respect on that dude, too. have like, to. He's a real deal. Honestly. I mean, everyone thought that once he beat Usman the first time, that that was it. He was just yeah. going to lose the rematch. He's defended his title very well. Yeah. So, good card overall. So, uh, and I saw they announced 300. I'm pumped for that. I think it's in April. Is that MSG? They have they one have coming up in Miami, so. too. They're That's going to be a banger. It. Do that? Yeah. So hopefully they get Jones. I don't know if Jones will be back in time yet. I hope. Stipe, but I, I pray. Um, next story here, the U.S. Senate has a gay porn scandal. Apparently a congressional staffer has been accused of filming amateur gay porn inside of a Senate hearing room. Uh, there was a video shows a staffer was engaging in sex acts in the Hart Senate office building in Washington, D.C. One photo shows a man on his hands and knees facing the camera while wearing only a jock strap. The content was allegedly shared in a private group of for gay men in the political scene. Uh, Mince, what do you got on gay porn? <laughs> I, look, I'm never going to judge what other people do with their life, but when you're talking about doing it in the, the United States, mm. uh, the White House, that's probably not very smart. And then I actually read an article, we got sent on it to just be a little more educated, and they're saying that it's possible they were doing it to try to sell it and make money, and then that makes it a total... 
Like the article I read was funny. They were like, oh, people have been having sex in the White House for years. It's just nobody's ever tried to sell it. Yeah. And so apparently that takes it uh, to a whole nother level. Shout out Bill Clinton. And then the, uh, and then the, the, and then of course, you know, the jokes were like, oh, well, his, and the guy who got caught, his mom is saying, you know, he's not doing well. He's taking it real hard. And, <laughs> I mean, sometimes the jokes, they write themselves now. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Sometimes they do. What do you got? Gay porn? Um, look, you could stick your meat wherever you want. It's none of my business, yeah. but it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I think our government's just a bunch of pedophiles. I don't know if they'll cut that out, but they're the shadiest bastards in the entire world. Uh, they do way worse shit than gay porn. I can assure you of that. <laughs> uh, I don't support it. Not, not you could you could be gay, do what you want. I just <laughs> I don't support what they do behind closed doors. I think they're all a bunch of shady bastards. Thanks for clarifying that, Nick. Yeah, uh, I like that, Mintz. I think he actually made a good point. It's a capitalist uh, uh, aspect of it that they're trying to sell it and make gain financially. No, it. they were they saying that works. changed everything. Yeah, so that like the article I read was like, look. Yes. Everybody knows stuff like this has been going on in the White House, but to actually film it yeah. and like try to make a gain off it, apparently that like takes it to a whole other level. Yeah, there's a difference if you just want to go center court right here and have a nice little. Nice <laughs> I'm little, sure it's know, like a thrill to try to bang nice in the White House. But think about it though, like you're, well, you're yeah. like a staffer in the White House. You're but trying if, to like if bang you were in, in that White center House, court, you know, I could see that being. And like, you were you know, taking some girl doggy style right there, Mince. Like it's different if you're trying to make money on it, you know. Well, the best way to fight in I don't know who I don't know who'd be pay for that, but you don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'd pay to see that. Yeah, I, mean, I think that like y'all are raw dogging someone. Y'all, y'all, y'all are all. I, I got no comment. On it. I, I gotta just. I've been in enough stuff this year to where I need to recuse myself from this conversation. Come on, come on. Oh, man, see, out of them. Come on. Learning. Hey, yeah. this isn't live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, say how you feel. We'll, we'll just cut it. I'm kidding. I'm done. Fall for the trap. <laughs> Um, next story here, the roast of Tom Brady's coming to Netflix. Uh, apparently, Jeff Ross is hosting. Other comedians include Chris Rock, Ali Wong, John Mulaney, Chelsea Handler, Burt Kreischer, John Stewart, David Letterman, and Tom Segura. Mincy, what do you got on this? I think that'll be fun because, look, obviously I don't know Tom Brady, but he seems like a guy that'll be able to take it well. Like, he kind of, you know, he obviously is his own dude, and we all know he's all time the greatest quarterback in history and he's such a competitor and stuff, but – you know, as he's retired, and even in his last couple of years with the Bucks, when he got away from New England, you started seeing more of his personality. Because in New England, yeah. it was, like, super tight. He never said nothing. Yeah. And that was, like, the Patriot way and the Belichick way. It was, like, keep your mouth shut, just do your job. But, you know, we're seeing more and more of his personality, and I think he can ta- I think it's going to be really funny. I think he'll you know, take it well. Nick? I'm excited to see. I just don't know how you're going to roast Tom Brady. He's beautiful. Oh, he's got I seven did. Super Bowl rings. And there's plenty of stuff to roast him for. Like what? Like, kissing his son on the lips. Yeah, like yeah. that kind of weird thing, like the, the, the Guerrero yeah. shit. Like, I think there's stuff to roast him for. And I think this is the moment where we figure out if the roast has jumped the shark or not. Because yeah, if, if they step just, up to the plate and actually yeah. grill him or if they give him a pass. Yes, yeah, so if it's just like, hey, Tyree helmet catch, like then it's like, all right, the roasts are dead. You know, but given the names <laughs> Maybe get on there, for like deflated balls. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, there's like, a good, sure. Like they're going to make some jokes. football jokes, but if it's just all football shit and it's nothing like roast worthy, which is how they've traditionally been. The roast is How would you go after him? I mean, like I just said, like, I mean, that's... I feel like you could get away with the Giselle stuff, you might go that, after That, like, I, I mean, But see, like, I don't know if you bring ex-wife into a roast. Do they do that? Yeah, I oh think yeah, they bring yeah, every... Yeah, I think everything's on the table. Oh, yeah, everything's on the Especially table. Especially that lineup, because the lineup they have is yeah. great. Dude, they would... They, when they did Bob Saget, they were making fun of him about uh, Mary Kay and Ashley and stuff, calling him like a, like a creep, and, and he was like, oh, that... Like, hurt my feelings. I don't know. It was like a big yeah. thing. Go look into it. All right. Given that the name of comedians, though, I do think that it will be good because Segura, like, he's, he's a real, like, Chris Rock, obviously, two real deal comedians. They're going to get sure. it. Uh, we so. saw what Segura came up with Garth Brooks, so who knows what's going to come up with Tom Brady. Exactly. So it's, 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 a good, uh, it's, it's a good list of comedians as well. So I think it'll be fine, but if it, if it doesn't, the roasts are dead. Uh, last story here, the New Jersey Transit Bowl update. Last Thursday, we talked about a bull that got on the loose of the tracks, causing delays in New Jersey Transit. Uh, we've since learned that the bull's name is Ricardo. He escaped the slaughterhouse, and uh, he was eventually caught, but instead of taking him back to the slaughterhouse, he is being taken to the Skylands Animal Sanctuary, where he will have 232 acres to graze and roam freely for the rest of his life. He's earned it. That's a happy story. I mean, that is a happy story. Yeah. You know, Ricardo has really made an, an impression on the world. Yeah, although, like, I, I bet you not everyone's happy that Ricardo's happy. Like, if he delayed your commute that day, 
Oh, Frank I'm Tang didn't bring look happy. Ricardo to Frank the Tang didn't look happy about it. That's what I'm saying. Like, could you imagine if Ricardo? We get like a running of the bulls with Frank and Ricardo. Yeah. If you're in the slaughterhouse and you get out, you deserve your freedom. For sure. No, agreed. Yeah, that should be like a rule. That's like, like getting out of like that's like getting out of uh, whatever the, the the toughest jails. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, tipping like Alcatraz hat. or something. You know, for 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 bulls. Yeah, like you got to tip the hat. To, to I wonder if if it's like teachable. Like to, like like if, to if tell the other bulls, like, yeah, all you got to do is escape and, and they'll save you. Yeah, like who did Ricardo get word from? <laughs> and is Ricardo going to try to give him word? Like, is he going to, you know. Is he going to come back to the slaughterhouse and try to help other bulls That's escape? That's what I'm saying. You know, Ricardo <laughs> probably had some friends in there. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. His boys. I wonder how he knew, though. Like, they don't, like, they're not slaughtering him in front of the other bulls, I hope, right? I mean, he definitely hears them get murked. Yeah. Yeah. You probably yeah. noticed some of his friends were leaving and not coming back too. Yeah, yeah. Or or his young Cass. Dude, I'm in, I'm in on Ricardo. He didn't fuck up my community. I fuck with Ricardo. I was oh hell yeah, good yeah. for Ricardo, man. He earned he earned a great rest of his life. You know. Would, would you would you ever let Ricardo live here, Ben? At the office. Only I, if we could bull ride him. I, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I I don't know this. I don't know if Ricardo and this this beautiful wood floor would ma- match to Max. What would imagine you, you riding a bull? Have you done that? No. Would you? I, I would rather not, but I wouldn't say never. Say never. Would you, you know, ride? I mean, if they, it, it would have to be the monetary incentives would have to be pretty damn good. What about this? You got to pick one. You got to ride Ricardo, a hundred times, <laughs> or you got to shoot. A porno on the golf simulator to do live content again at Barstool Sports. What are you picking? I think I'm riding Ricardo. Hunter no, time. hell no. I don't know, man. I just porn, the porno thing. The <laughs> you, porno you, thing. You get fresh pussy. <laughs> I know, but man, the porn. I mean, I'm not. Or saying ride I, a I bull a hundred times. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but just I don't know. Man. I mean, I'm are they little, are they going to par- post it everywhere? If if I'm a little paranoid it. about that. It'll be on one site. Nobody knows what it is. It won't be titled like Ben Mintz or anything. Is his face in it? Uh, he's wearing the Hannibal Lecter mask that he wore. Yesterday. That's kind of pimp. Maybe. All right, that might change. A bit. <laughs> I just, I don't know. Like once you're, I don't know. That's that's a, that. You, you, yeah, that was not a dilemma I was prepared for going into this, guys. I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> All right, well, then let's get into your real life dilemma. We All got right. a bunch of them. Yeah, boys, got, we got a few things going on. Yeah, new be, week, baby. New One week, day, yeah. new week. Knock on wood. You never like. I feel like. You know, I'm I'm careful to say like this week has to be better than last week, but like Can't sometimes you sometimes you fall though, and you can keep falling. I mean, I feel like I've I've done that in my three three and a half years. Yeah, Portugal. but right now they kind of got you like walking around in uh, bubble wrap. Yeah, uh, well, so wake up, Mincy. So, so it's hard if, to go uh, we'll give the quick summary of it. Wake up, Mincy suspended, not canceled though. We're not canceled, so that's a positive. Mm-hmm. I'm banned from live programming for the moment. So yesterday, uh, I'm sure we'll get a clip of this. I had to. I uh, showed up in my Silence of the Lambs Hannibal Lecter mask and had to sit in the back of the stream and not talk. And Jonathan Taylor, uh, just so these guys are like recent. Is that John Alexander? Ricky Williams? Saints? Deuce Camara. That's what that's what Mitch is trying to say. Deuce scored six times? Camara had six. Camara scored six. Oh, was that the Christmas game? Yeah. Yeah, I lost fantasy. Yeah, the Christmas game in 2020. You know, so that's a thing. My dumbass, not only did I get Wake Up Mitzi <laughs> suspended, I had to run my mouth about this terrible Green Bay play oh, that Dave yeah. fired huge on yesterday. And then Baker Mayfield comes up, not just plays the best game of the season, one of the best games of his career. Yeah. He torched those son of the bitches, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah. I had the Bucks, though. Was yeah, well, good, good, good for you, you Thank know. You. Uh, but uh, so then Dave was all that. So I mean, he just. I mean, I, I had a rough week with Dave last week. Can there's I, no, can there's, I, there's can no I, getting around can it. Can I ask how the Packers came into your mind while Dave was ripping you a new asshole? I just had looked at the lines the day before, and I really thought they were in a good bounce back. So, so you got ripped, and you were probably like, "All right, let me at least give Prez a winner, so I'll be on his good side." And then they lost. I was just kind of trying to change the conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I but like I just that. picked a bad topic. You know, Dave, I was getting torched in the office, and we had kind of an awkward silence. Like, he lit me up, and then there's that, like, awkward silence. And I was like, you know what? I went through the game just today. I really like this game. I don't know. I should have picked a different conversation, okay? Yeah. In hindsight, that was not a different smart. game. That, too. And then, yeah, so Dave just – I got it from all – I mean, I like, last week – I've had about five or six of these in my three, three and a half years at Barstool where it's just like all gone super viral and super wrong, like 2021 Omaha. And then actually last year, 
at the very end before Christmas was when Tommy Smokes arrested me and all that. Yeah. I had that nuclear week. I had like, it was like the exact same time a year later. I'm going through it again. But what are you going to do? You know, I'm still here. Uh, I'll say this. After everything I went through this year, uh, you know, as we all know, when I got let go by Penn and stuff. I mean, my, my skin's pretty damn thick, boys. You know, yeah. I, I know I take it a lot, but I can take it. I'm, you know, I mean, if you're not a resilient yeah. person, you're working for the wrong company because that's what this job is. You're going to be in the public eye. When things go wrong, you just got to deal with it. So yeah. it is what it is. I'm here. The sun came up today. Well, kind Still of. Still here. Yeah. So. The crazy thing is, Mincy, is if that pick hits, Wake Up Mincy could be live today. Yeah, awesome. that's true. I didn't want it to be live again, man. I think we've all learned that's not for the best. You, we're going to get a you, dump you, button. <laughs> we're going to get a dump button. We're going to come back. We're in a group. Yeah, you know, we're going to evaluate beginning of 2020. Look, dude, I, I, there's a difference between suspension and canceling. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm still optimistic. But, it, Bincy, like, what about the people who are like, hey, just two strokes of bad luck. Like, it can't happen three times. Do you think you deserve a shot at live redemption at some point ever? I, You're I, only look, down 0-2. Two out of twelve is a tough ratio, though. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah. You know that's a tough. That's a tough. Yeah. Even though I mean that's a Jordan shot eighty three percent from the foul line in his career, it's like eighty five, something yeah. like that. You know, you miss a little bit. No, uh, I would. I definitely want to come back, but I would prefer it. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get a dump button and all that, and you know I'm just hoping that I'm not. You know, who knows how long I'm banned from live content here? But like, you know. I mean, I'm gonna roll with it as I always do, but yeah. that, that that would be unfortunate. If it's a little, uh, it's a little I mean, you, and, and radio live content has been good live content. Well, it has so far, but like, yeah. what's that gonna be in two or three months? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it's good in the time being, but you yeah, know, I mean, I want to be able to go on radio with it, you know, it, you yeah. know, like stuff like that. But it's a little bittersweet that we're standing in front of the Wake Up Mincy set this morning. Oof. Yeah, you know? it's a tough scene. Yeah. But hey, you know what though? We're about to have the holidays. We're gonna regroup. We're going to get our minds right, and we're going to come back with a new energy in 2024, and we're going to crush it, boys. And Chicago's freaking great. Love the office. Love the people. I mean, I don't know. I'm just really happy I moved up here, and things are good. 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 Bounce back. Bounce back, Mincy. All right. A couple other things to get into. I want to mention new, new year of college football. Ole Miss is coming for every one of all your team's best players. It's the freaking best thing I've ever seen. We took the freaking all SEC, Florida, all Princely, all badass pass rusher. We go take Tennessee's top pass rusher in safety, number one linebacker in the portal of Arkansas, number one receiver from South Carolina, safety from Oklahoma. We think we're about to get the number one overall D lineman from him. It's a new world. Yeah. I never thought you'd see a day where people are like, nah, man, I don't want to play in the swamp or Neyland. I want to go to Oxford, Mississippi. Lane Kiffin, unbelievable. I'm glad to be a small part of it, selling these brick watches for the Grove Collective. Just nuts. I, I never thought. And you did the schedule release. You basically yeah. are Ole Miss. Yeah. That, hey, the schedule release was fun. I think yeah. Walker was a little mad, apparently, that FaceTime. You he, should take a little credit for all the recruits coming. They probably just want to be your friend. Yeah, kind of do, I think. Like, I really got a good thing going with Ole Miss and the athletic department and I have a good relationship with Lane. And, you do. You know, it's, uh, you know, like, of course, and of course, in the typical Barstool fashion, that video comes out right as it's right. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, I mean, just, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. You know, the timing's always elite. But I just never thought I'd – you know, I've been an Ole Miss fan for a long, long time, and you just – you're always like that mid-tier bottom – mid-tier SEC, and you just never thought there would be a day where Florida and Tennessee kids are leaving Florida and Tennessee to come to Ole Miss. Like, like not – you know, yeah, if it's their, like, backups maybe, but when it's, like, top guys, it's yeah. like, man, I'm just going to enjoy this. The lane train. Yeah, and uh, excited about New Year's, going to the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. Um, that'll be a lot of fun, Ole Miss-Penn State. So Come to the SIP. Yeah, a lot, lot, of, lot of good things going on, man. A lot of, a lot of good energy. Anything else, Mincy? Um, I'm just going to try to stay out of Dave's doghouse this week. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, just, I, I just don't see how. It's kind of one of those things where, like, no matter what I do, I'm going to get flamed. But uh, at least I'm here. Uh, we're, you know, I'm in the office until the office is closed Thursday. You know, I caught a, I remember last year I think I went. Office is closed Thursday? I think so. Yeah. I went south December 14th last year, and I will not be doing that again. That's for sure. Because uh, just to open myself up to – To old habits. Well, just not that. Just like leaving a week early is not the message we need to be sending right now. I need to stay in here and take it. And I love yep. – like I said, I love being in Chicago. Um, but, yeah, that's – oh, yeah, I want to make sure we mention Billy and Donnie, yep. Uganda. We got to give a shout-out. Billy kept his job with the touchdown pass. Did they uh, win? No. Oh, shit, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think they won. Oh. oh damn! damn. Is that we're not live. Yeah, we're not live. So no, no, they already tweeted. But they tweeted it. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, but uh, but so Billy did throw a touchdown. Uh, oh, got to give the got to give Billy and Donnie credit. Going back to the, brutal you know, twice, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty. Got to give them a lot of respect there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. 
that. Hopefully they get one next time. They gotta go I don't back. know if there's a third time, man. You gotta go back until they win. Yeah, you can't just keep losing. Oh, you they scored win. a touchdown at least. Did they? Did they not score a touchdown the first game? No, it was 14 0 the first game. Damn. But man, Billy looked beat up, man. He played quite he threw the touchdown pass. He was showing like his it looked rough. Apparently they treat your skin stuff. They don't give you the alcohol on your skin. They do yeah, they different. just burn it. Yeah. Oh wow. Dude, it looked tough, man. Billy's a tough dude though, man. He's uh I gotta give him credit. Uh, yeah. But respect to those guys for getting out and, you know, doing anything for the content. You know, oh, yeah. I admire that attitude. Absolutely. All right, then. I think that's it. Right, boys? Yeah. Right Thanks to High Noon. Happy holidays. Yeah. And, uh, let's hopefully have a little more pe peace and tidings of comfort and joy this week, boys. Perfectly put, Mincy. Thank you. Uh, that's the rundown.